yes, I'm aware there are oodles of these on, on YouTube already. So why would we build another one? Uh, pretty much, this is just the solution I came up with, and I think that it works well. It's got heaps of options. It's parametric, so you can change everything around, and it will 99% of the time still work. And you can put it on pretty much anything. So, without further ado, I will show you. So, this one is available for anyone who wants it, and it's free on the moment. Um, I made it in Blender 3.3.0. Um, so if you head on over to my camera, I'll put a link in the description. And you can pick it up there for free. If you want to drop a couple bucks, that'd be great. Um, any support. Alright, so first up, let's have a bit of a talk about how it works. Uh, it's really straightforward. It's take a curve. Let's just disable this. Here's our nice, simple, standard curve. And add geometry nodes to it. And ta-da, chain. And then you've got all of these different different parameters around here you can play with, and it's all parametric. So this link curve resolution, um, that changes how many vertices are around this outside edge of the loop. You take it all the way down, it squares, and as you go along, you can make a few different changes. Um, as you get higher, anything over about 16, doesn't really make too much difference, except for increasing your vertice count over here. Um, link length is how long each one of these little links are. Uh, so as you can see, I know it's auto-updating, but you crank that up, it makes them longer, you turn it all the way down, you get little rings. Um, pretty sure we can make chainmail out of this, but we'll reset this back to its default. Link radius is the radius of this curve at the end here. Um, so the higher that is, you know, here's um, wonky shapes. Alrighty, link radial resolution. So that is how many uh, sides there are to get around the outside of the metal here. So crank that all the way down, we've got three. Let's turn off shade smooth. So 3 is the minimum I've set it to, 4 is square, as you can see, you can get some cool cool different things here, depending on how many you have, 5-6 is useful for nice round. Link diameter is just how thick the actual metal is, you crank that up, you see, the chunky ones, and all the way down you get tiny little spindly ones, and you can make go into weight tile, which is not ideal. Shade smooth, just a toggle between flat and smooth, we're just using the viewport shading, um, so just an EV here. It works cycles and EVs. This is just a basic metallic texture, uh, or shader I should say, uh, nothing fancy. Uh, this little weld, toggle weld, that toggles this little weld join here. And if you turn that on, you get it, it turns to zero, it's a boolean value, it turns to zero, and you will find your vertice count actually drops. Um, so it gets rid of a bit of geometry, or it gets rid of a little bit of detail. The factor here is how far out or in it goes, how smooth it is, is how far along, so how tight the weld is. Uh, if you set the scale factor to 1, you will it's, it's nothing. So rather than doing that, if you turn the toggle off, you'll save on some geometry and get the same result. Chain twist, uh, twists along the length of the chain. Uh, as you can see here, having a big effect at the front, right at the end, and not much of an effect right at the start there. And you can break a few things if you go too, too crazy on it, but that's up to you. Uh, alternating link rotation is the angle between each of the, the links, I suppose. So at 90 is where you get your perfect chain, I suppose you would call it. Um, and too far down, and you'll start getting clipping. Now, it does follow the curve, it follows the tangent, so you'll see this bit of rotation. So it depends entirely on the normal of the curve as to where this goes. Um, all right, link. Curve sharpness factor. It's an interesting one. Um, so if you put this all the way down closer to zero, then you get you know a chain that follows your curve almost exactly. If you crank this up, you see you start getting really jagged sh straight lines uh, all the way till till you can get an actual straight line between the two points, regardless of what's between them. Uh, it's just an interesting one, a fun one to play with. And this link tension adjustment is a manual adjustment to how tight these links are against each other. So if we turn this down a bit, you'll see that there's more of a gap between the links. And if we turn the tension up, you'll see that we can get them really tied up against each other. Uh, so that's just a, a manual adjustment that allows you to make sure that you're getting the look that you are looking for without, uh, for when uh, the automated processes don't quite get you there. And then we literally just added this. Uh, it's a cool new one, roll on curve. Um, so pretty much it will let you show you how much of it's visible. You get some cool animations with this, I'm sure. Um, now, this does not move it along the curve. All it 
Dusk is crawled along the curb. I'm sure I will find a way to put a move along the curb eventually as I go along and update this. Uh, but that's, that's where we're at, and it works on all sorts of things. Um, so here's a Helix, another basic curve. Well, not a basic curve, but a curve nonetheless. Go spiral. Mew. The roll and curve function is kind of cool. I like playing with it now. It's, it's a fun one. Anyway, so that is, that's it. Uh, just make new ones. Let's go into edit mode. Draw some new ones. Ta-da! Chains. Chains everywhere. You can see I'm still getting... Because these are all instanced. They're all built. I know, it's getting crazy. But, you see, viewport is not suffering at all. And while we have a lot of objects, we don't have a lot of vertices or edges. Anyway, and let's get rid of all of those. Let's turn these ones off, and that's that's it. And it works on all of them. You can draw new new curves in, add new curves. All you got to do is add in a curve. Let's put a make a circle. Now, Jimmy said, "Are you worried?" Here we are. Add modifier, geometry nodes. Ta-da! So let's get into making one from scratch. Uh, it's not going to be exactly the same, uh, which is fine. What the important thing is the why and the how, so that you can make your own things rather than just being able to make an exact copy of what we've made here. So you can just grab it off a gum tree anyway. And it's very fun. So let's add in a curve to work with. So just a basic Bezier curve will do just fine. All right, that's clearly not what we need. So let's add a geometry nodes. I don't mind my little noodle layout. It's a bit different. Anyway, so we don't need this curve to start with, that's for later on. What we're going to do is make our loops in here, so it can be all parametric, so when we adjust one thing, it affects the other things, and it still works. Uh, you can instance pre-created meshes along a point, and it will be pretty straightforward, but you get a lot less control over it. So that's the value of this, and then once it's set up, it's super easy to use. So first, we know the link shape, it is basically an elongated torus. So we need two semicircles to cap off each end, and then a line between each one. So, and then what we're going to do is set in some curve rivers. We're going to need an arc that is, you know, a portion of a circle, half a circle to be exact, if you want. So, set it to 180 degrees, and invert the arc, <coughs> excuse me, um, which will give us the other side, but we want as few inputs as possible. So we're just going to use transform, have two separate transforms, and a join at the end here. Join geometry. So if we were to put in a transforms, and a second one, we'll be able to get both sides. So let's rotate this 180 degrees so that we get the other half. And then we need to translate these so that we get the link shape. So the translate is, is moving. Um, we're going to be doing it on the y-axis just because that's the way everything is frame dated for us. Uh, and we're just going to keep things simple with ones. Right, so if we're mirroring, that means the other one's going to be moved by negative one, and this one's moved by one. Right, so let's start by adding some parameters in, so that we can get this happening all at the same time, rather than having to change this value and change this value every time we want to change something. Um, and the reason that using one arc is good also means when you change this one value, it works. You don't have to change it on two different separate arcs to get them to align. All right, so. What we need is a separate or a combine XYZ so that we can affect these values separately. Combine XYZ. We've got our group input up here. And since we're working in the Y axis, just set that to 1. We will plug that in here and rename it. That's helpful. And then translation. So now when we affect one, we affect both. Except that it's not quite doing what we want it to do this one is not being mirrored, so to mirror that we will need a separate combine XYZ for this one. And we need this to be negative 1, if this input is 1, then obviously we've got to multiply it by 1, so it will be in the math node. Uh, multiply it by negative 1 to get this value of 1 to be negative 1. Make up our noodles. Now, add, make that to be multiply. Now we adjust one, we adjust them both, and we're getting the mirror effect that we're looking Perfect for us. So, next step is to add in the lines. And since we've already got coordinates for where these things need to be, it will be a little bit more straightforward. So, what we need to do is join 
this end up here, which once again, uh, I get rid of the tool. Okay, so we're joining up this end here to this one here, and then this one here to this one here. So we need a curve line, working all in curves at the moment, so it all works the same. And our start points, if we, we add these in, to get our length, add these to our start and end points. Uh, let's add another join geometry, and another one over here, so that we can see what we're doing. So when we plug in these same start and end points, now our line is getting bigger or shorter as we adjust this one, which means it's going to be the right length every time. Now all we got to do is put it in the right position. And because this radius is one meter, obviously we're, we're keeping things really straightforward and simple. We're going to offset that by one meter to the positive x, and one meter to the negative x, and it will all line up. So, transforms. Right. So we need this to be, y is not helpful to us. Negative x, do this. Right, so that one works. Then we need the second one. Oops. Close off. Transform geometry in there. And this one needs to be positive to mirror it to the other side. Now, let's see where this is going. If we were to, let's go radius over here, plug that in. So now we can reflect the radius from out here. We've exposed the value. Now we need to use that radius through the same setup here to parameterize it. I'm going to use that as a word. I'm going to call that a word, parameterize it. So when we do this, make sure it's all plugged into the right axes and set that through our translation. You can see that when we change the radius of the arc, make sure we reset all these, change the radius of the arc, we're changing the position of those points, and when we change the position of the arcs, we also get to change the length of the line. And that is how you make it a parametric link for our chain. Nice and simple. Now we're going to do is turn this into a mesh. So you might go curve to mesh. If you need a profile, they're round, so a circle, a curve circle. Let's set this to 0.1 for the minute. And then ta da! Except. Because it's not all one curve, the normals at this point and this point, because these curves are different, are different normals, so therefore your profile around the outside has a different orientation, and you're going to end up with these jinky little gaps. So first, we've got to weld these together, and to weld them, we need them to be a mesh. So let's curve to mesh, and join, nope, merge geometry. Merge. Merge by distance. And that will weld the points together. We just need to convert it back to a curve so that we can curve to mesh it. Oh, mesh to curve. Ta -da. And you see those jinky little bits are gone. Right. All right. Now we have a link. What do we do with the link? We go instance this on our curve. So let's add in a new group input. And we are going to instance on points. Right. Cool. That's helpful. And our links need to be our instances. Ta-da! Oh, that doesn't work. Why doesn't that work? Because we've only got two points on our Bezier curve. So to get more, we need to resample it. And this is what we get. All right, so when you're resampling, this basically takes your same curve and puts an X number of points on it. Crank this up, turn it down, get all sorts of things. Uh, evaluated gives you an even number depending on how long the curve is. and the resolution in your viewport, or you through some of your settings. Um, what we want is length. Depending on this length value here, it will add more or less of it. Now, first, let's turn this down, because a meter is pretty big. So let's put this to 0.05 with a length of, and turn down our profile curve. All right, so now we've got more manageable size. If we are resampling the curve, we want one link per, or one point per link that we will need. So depending on the size of our link, we'll change the size of this length here that we need. So you can figure that out between the, these values here, uh, the length of the link and the radius of the end points. Yeah. Oof, we made that really big again. Right, so there's our link. 
So just start with a new one. Alright, so how do we work this out? We know the length of each side and we know the radius here. So let's just add all that together and go from there. So length of the sides. Uh, add. And then we will add the radius to that. Turn that into our length. First, these are the wrong way around. Let's let's rotate these so they follow. Well, actually, we should have done that first. All right, let's not worry about that bit for a second. Let's make these follow the curve first. What we need is to align these to the tangent. So the tangent is we have our curve. Where's our, where's our MT? The curve goes like this. The tangent is a straight line that. Mind my drawing. Terrible with the mouse. Um, just touches at one point. So if we are looking for the tangent, we just change to this. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Ta -da, we're back. So these back to Alright. So we've got our, our chain links. Let's align them to the tangent of our curve so that they follow what we need to. So let's find our tangent first. Curve tangent. And then we also want to align rotation Euler to vector. So we're, the vector we're aligning it to is the tangent. So let's set that into our rotation. Alright, that sort of worked. It's just at them, but we're on the wrong axis. So let's just work through these until we find the right one. Uh, it's Y for us. Because that's now they're all end to end. Happy days. Alright. Now we can figure out how many we need. So let's get back to this. So using our length and the radius, we're going to add those together. And that will be a good starting point. Add those together, add in the length. See, that's not quite what we need. Alright, so length plus radius isn't quite enough, but we've actually got two radiuses because we have two arcs. So let's add in a multiply node. We get two times the radius. And it's almost there. Okay. And the last thing we need to do is factor in how thick these links are. So each link is okay, 0.01 radius, or radius 0.01 meters. So let's add in a value of 0.01, and let's put this up over here. Now, because we don't want that overlapping, not, we're not adding it, we're subtracting it because we don't want them to be touching. Let's subtract it. Correct. Yes. Now, there's two of them that are, so this half of this one plus this half of this one. So let's multiply that one by two. So as you can see, there we go. Ta da! Oh, we've gone the wrong way. We're supposed to add it. Oh, we're supposed to add those things, those radiuses. And now we have links that are roughly where they need to be. So if we make these thicker, it changes how long these are, which is useful for us. So, we're supposed to add in the thicknesses, not subtract them. Alrighty, so here we are. So now, if we were to change the length, we'll see that it shifts along. We're not changing, well, we're changing the number of points to affect, be affected by how many points we have. Oh, by how big our links are, I should say. Alright, cool. Parameters, they're great. All right, now all we're going to do is rotate every second one so that it looks like a chain. So we've got to rotate our instances. All right. Now all we're going to do is rotate them by 90 degrees. Now remember, this is around the local space of these, so I'm pretty sure for us it's going to be the X rotation. Oh, I am very wrong. Rotate around the Y, but that's affecting all of them, right? And that's because we have a point of selection now. So let's rotate these by 90. Now all we're going to do is selection. Let's get another math right down here, which has a super useful thing called a modulo. Now, modulo lets us, and we want it to be for each different one, so we're going to use an index. Index allows us to identify each separate unit you know, point. So, index through the modulo, and this will. Ta da! Now, modulo works in the sense that it sort of goes. 
Let's see if we can get rid of there. Didn't go. So let's take these instances and let's see if you evaluated a few known instances. Fewer. So as you can see, here's our viewer node here. And our index goes up, except over in our viewer, it's 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, which is great for our um, booleans. So if we were to turn this up to 3, for instance, you can see it would be 0, 1, 2. And then it goes back and resets. So every third one resets. And for our purposes, that means that we're going to have anything above a 1 is a yes for our boolean, 0 is a no. So 0, not rotated. 1 and 2 are rotated. For us, we want every second one. So every, after every second one, it should reset. So zero, one, zero, one. Right, that's great. Uh, and then, now you got a chain. Now, if we were to take this tool, let's, uh, we don't want to annotate, we want to edit mode, draw in another one. Ta da! You've got a chain generator. You get a lot less parameters. But that's the basics of how it works and how parametric modeling works. Or and that is why we build it from scratch with all this noodling over here so that we can adjust these things on the fly and it will just adjust all of our values. So, and then once you sort of put in a little extra work, or I should say a lot of extra work, that is how you end up with this noodle tree that does all these things. So creating a link curve, set position, so this one, curve line that has a position set. It basically works all the same, except you have a few extra things in here. So link weld points, our group input is huge, because we've got all these different parameters. It allows us to share, say, set shape smooth and assign materials and things. Anyway, that's that's the basics of it. And then you can go out and create your endings and you know, see where you get to. Hopefully you can take some of these principles and apply them. I know that you know, there's a lot of extra things in here that we didn't do in our basic CF curve geometry nodes, but we've got the, the basics of parametric modeling and why you would want to do it. And you also get, um, you know, how to do modulo and a few other things. Uh, if you want to affect things on one end and not the other, you use the factor of the, the spline parameter. Spline parameter. That will give you the length and the factor of the spline. So factor at zero at one end and one at the other end. Uh, so you can use that with a few other controls to adjust these things, the rotation. So for instance, if you were to set that into the selection, nope, let's put it into rotation. Uh, that's a bit of a job. Anyway, that's it. Uh, we'll be back again with more of these. And hopefully you found at least some of this helpful. I'm slowly working on the format of these so that we can come up with something that flows smoothly and I can hang on talking and it can be more succinct and flow better. Till next time, happy creating.